Greetings everyone, this is First Centurion 753 with a new series with the game Hearts of Iron 4. Hearts of Iron 4 is a geopolitical strategy game based in World War II. It was just released today, June 6, 2016. I downloaded it from Steam. I did not get the pre-press release or anything. Um, I played one scenario with Iran in an attempt to conquer Iraq, re-establishing a Persian Empire. And that ended in a white peace between the two countries. Because I didn't get the pre-release version, I missed out on being one of the first to upload any of the any videos with the major factions. So we're going to go ahead and do an alternative history here with one of the minor factions in the game. We're going to start in 1939. And we are going to select one of the other countries. And the other country being Spain. Spain, for those who didn't know, was a fascist country during World War II. It was under the rulership of General Francisco Franco, who was victorious in the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s. And even though the Germans and the Italians had supported Franco during the war, General Franco elected to remain neutral during World War II. In this alternative scenario, we're going to explore the possibility of what would happen if General Franco had elected to join the Axis powers in World War II and how this would impact history. This is based on a theory that centers around this area right here, the Straits of Gibraltar. The Straits of Gibraltar is a 90 mile gap between the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. It is controlled, uh, duly controlled by the British and the Spanish during the war. The British control the region of Gibraltar here while Spanish control the African coast. Gibraltar was said to be an impenetrable fortress and it was a very strategic position for the British with the rest of their empire. The British connects to their empire through the Mediterranean Sea, through the Strait of Gibraltar, as well as the Suez Canal. If you were to cut off the Mediterranean Sea from the British, then their empire would be forced to resupply them by sailing all the way around the southern tip of Africa, through the southern Atlantic, then up the African coast. Some historians believe that this would have been too far to maintain supply lines and the British would eventually have to capitulate to the German submarine blockade. And this series is going to explore the option of what would happen if the Spanish entered the war and cut off the British at Gibraltar. The Germans had attempted to cut off the British with Erwin Rommel's North African campaign in 1942 as he drove toward the Suez Canal. He was defeated at the Battle of El Alamein by Bernard Montgomery and many believe that was a significant turning point in the war. As Spain, we will join, the goal is to join the Axis powers and intervene in the conflict with Britain and France. First, we'll try to grab as much territory from France as possible, as southern France is rich in steel and aluminum. Additionally, France's North African holdings in Algeria and Tunisia also have steel deposits that could be valuable. Spain controls the Canary Islands in the off the African coast, as well as Rio de Oro as part of the Sahara Desert. Taking a look at the resource map, which in this game is maybe the most strategic approach. Spain has significant steel deposits, a little bit of aluminum, 
and a little bit of Tunskin. In order to expand Spain's resources, one of the goals will be to capture these areas of southern France when Germany invades the north. In order to move quickly, we're going to have to focus on armored technology. I'm going to try to put together some armored tank divisions, which I can base in Catalonia. Quickly advance through southern France, grabbing these regions down here. Possibly even the Alps and Rhone. Aquitaine is another important region with significant iron steel deposits and aluminum deposits. But we could probably take them with the infantry. Spain's infantry consists, uh, or Spain's army consists of 27 infantry divisions and one cavalry division. This will require early tank production if it's going to be successful. Spain's navy consists of one heavy cruiser, five light cruisers, 20 destroyers, and seven submarines. Its air force, mostly fighters and tactical bombers, with some close air support bombers. No strategic bombers, heavy fighters, or naval bombers are in Spain's arsenal at the beginning. But grabbing these additional resources will help to stimulate Spain's industrial production. In addition, I plan on deploying a armor division in Africa that can sweep along the North African coast grabbing the regions of Algiers and Tunisia. Once France is knocked out of the war, the goal will be to capture Gibraltar and cutting the British off from the Mediterranean. And then we can expand, we can look to expand with other options, such as Portugal, which has significant Tunskin deposits, which I believe help with production of tanks. Additionally, if we can fully annex Portugal, we can grab the Azor Islands, which lay on the path of a uh, strategic trade route, supply route, between British and the Americas. Furthermore, if Spain establishes itself reestablishes itself as a regional power, then perhaps we can begin to look to establish Spain as a global power. There are oil deposits here in Venezuela, which could help fuel the, bridge, the uh, Spanish Empire, as well as the closest rubber deposit here in Brazil. Looking in towards the Mediterranean, the Greek Peninsula is heavy with chromium deposits which are used for the production of advanced engines. So we may have to look to advance east here. Spain's technology has already slightly progressed in 1939. We do have light tanks, and one of our first technological advances is going to be continuing down the light tank line. Additionally, since we're focusing on uh, a ground campaign, we're going to continue with land doctrine. Spain has already elected to follow the Great Battle Plan Doctrine. I probably would not have elected that since playing earlier. I didn't really do well with the battle plans. Um, don't really have a good grasp of them yet. But prepared defense will help to improve defense as well as increase organization of units.
which is critical. Further down that line, you have the Grand Assault Doctrine, which presides a 10% increase in breakthrough, which will help as the Spanish attempt a blitzkrieg throughout southern France and North Africa. The third technology that we are going to seek is going to be in the industrial category under construction in an attempt to gain more resource efficiency. That's our resource technology to start. Looking at our production next. Spain has 32 factories, eight military factories, seven naval dockyards, and 17 civilian factories. I know that prior to World, during World War II, Spain wasn't uh, considered to be a fully industrialized country. It was still very agrarian, which is represented pretty well here. With three military factories open, we're going to go ahead and start a new production line. And we are going to begin building light tank one. I'm going to go ahead and add the additional two factories here to simulate production. And this will require us to find some resources. For the motorized production line, we need one oil and one rubber. For the fighter line, we need additional fighter, additional oil, three additional aluminum, and one rubber. And for the tank line, we'll need additional three oil. That gives us a total of five oil. Five oil, two rubber units, and three aluminum units. Luckily for us, our fascist friend to the north, Germany, seems to have abundant deposits in those categories. Maybe not rubber. But we can go ahead and trade with them. Under oil. Under aluminum. And under rubber. Looking forward, we may need additional supplies in those categories, which will call for the construction of a synthetic refinery that will place in Madrid. From a national focus point of view, we've already advanced in some categories, being 1939. Significant advances in armor efforts and industrial efforts. The large Navy doctrine is one that I would probably not have elected to pursue. Instead, I would have probably gone with a flexible Navy as it has bonuses in convoy introduction, unrestricted submarine warfare, wolf packs, advanced submarine warfare, and combine operations rating. After we capture Gibraltar, we will send our submarines and other intercepting ships into the Atlantic to try to hunt down British supply convoys. This flexible navy would have given us the option to make a more make advances towards a more submarine effort as well as the destroyer effort which would have given us quicker ships, better for hunting down British convoys. Additional next step is going to be for the modifying the government. Spain has a significant amount of political power to start in 1939. So we're going to go ahead and fill all of these political advisor positions. 
first we're going to elect the ideological crusader which will give other countries the same ideology a 20% increase in opinion that will warm us towards Italy and Germany second we'll elect to appoint the captain of industry advisor which will give 10% bonuses in construction speed of civilian factories infrastructure and refineries Our last political advisor will be the fascist demagogue as it increases daily fascism support. For the military staff, we're going to appoint a chief of the army. And as we're looking for quick mobile blitzkrieg campaigns in southern France and northern Africa, we're going to elect to appoint the Army Maneuver Expert, which will give our units an increase of 10% speed. In research and production, we're going to employ an armored company tank designer. And at this point, we're going to hold on to the rest of the political power just in case something happens in the future. Again, not familiar with this game too much. I played Hearts of Iron 2, which sort of uh, gives you a hint to my age. Played that in high school. Never played Hearts of Iron 3, but I enjoyed Hearts of Iron 2. And I enjoy most political strategy games, geopolitical strategy games. So at this point, I think we have gone over everything for Grand Strategy. It's been about 20 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. And we'll start playing in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them below. And also feel free to like the channel and subscribe. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.